Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Steve Carl. Um, it's been about three or four months since we did one of these videos, but uh, um, just to recap, um, I started doing these Facebook Live videos in the spring of 2020 when all the states were starting to lock down uh, due to COVID restrictions. Um, and so I was trying to find a way to pass the time for myself and also hoping to help have other people uh, pass the time. Hopefully something slightly somewhat entertaining. So um, basically I read uh, all the poems that I had written between 1991 and then. And then when I ran out of those, um, I uh, that process actually uh, allowed me to kind of reconnect with my own creative spirit and so I started writing a lot of new material. Um, so as I've been um, editing that material, I'm going to introduce my partner, Kalele the dog. She will be barking in at anyone who passes by. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so, uh, so as I've been completing, you know, material uh, and gathering up enough of it to, to have uh, more readings, I've been doing those. So it's been about three or four months, as I said, since the last one. And I've got a chunk of material here to read, so... Um, and to go ahead and do that. So, um, and that's my other partner, Cheeky the Lovebird. She cheeps at all the good parts. So when you hear her cheep, then you know to listen up because that's the good stuff. Um, so yeah, so this, uh, this manuscript is called Half Dreamt. Um, which is a reference to the way it was produced, um, which is the same actually as the material in the previous. This is kind of an extension and a, a sequel to the, the um, Pandemic Summer, which was the last manuscript that I read in this series. Um, and the, uh, the, the way it was produced was by um, as many days as I could by um, just sitting up in bed and writing at the earliest possible opportunity in the morning before I was even fully awake. So, um, so by doing that, I was hoping to incorporate the part of your mind that is active when you dream, um, that sort of normally is, uh, during the day is normally kind of receded into the background, is not as active. Um, but I wanted to kind of capture as much of that in the in the writing as I could possibly do. And I'm not a neurologist, so I don't actually know how much of that is happening or whether it is even happening. Um, but I will say that I did feel like there was, there, uh, I was able to more freely kind of um, write without um, the normal sort of self-censoring that, um, goes on when other parts of the mind are active. Um, the kind of, you know, part that says, that doesn't make sense, or the part that says, you know, you can't say that, or, uh, you know, whatever. So, um, so yeah, so I saved that part for later. Um, I would go back to these often several months later um, and kind of tweak them into shape and, you know, add and take out words and change things and move stuff around and, um, things like that. So I did let the, the left brain hemisphere into the picture, but, um, but only after. And I was, um, I was often surprised at the word choices that, uh, that I had made, you know, writing the things half asleep and not, not necessarily remembering them until going back to read them later. And so that, um, that ability to surprise the reader, even if the reader is me, makes me think that, um, that I'm doing my job as a poet. So, um, so I wanted to go ahead and uh, read those. Um, the first thing actually is not from that manuscript. This is a piece, uh, the first little piece here is a piece that was written actually before the pieces in Pandemic Summer. 
It was written in late May or early June of last year, and it was one that I had forgotten about, and I recently found it and realized that I probably hadn't read it at the last reading, so I wanted to go ahead and just share that um, as a preface to the original thing, to the, to, to the, uh, the full reading. So, entire tradition of practice just allowed to fester behind window on planetary conflagration. Potential membrane of elephantine persuasion wanting. Hubba hubba, melatonin whispers apportionment into the ear of more wanting. Personal bedfellow awaits majesty of blossoming, ignorance. Multiple bruises notified the alert system is necessary within feral limits. Dupes, your reign will be over soon. Best get those floggings in. Welcome tender concrete resonance with ferocity and dynamism. Accelerationist puke. Surreptitious eroticism due to open discretion. Now cold shower. Paw in the sand. Contributor, philosophy and its guarantors, well said and posthumously. So that's possibly the first piece that was written using that method before the ones in Pandemic Summer. So Pandemic Summer was written, of course, last summer, uh, and so The pieces in Half Dreamt um, pick that up uh, in early autumn. So the pieces don't have titles, but I did leave the dates on um, this one. So I'll read the dates sort of as, a, as if it were a title to each piece. October 10th. The brief president's reality detachment reveles the remaining suburbs. His altered reality potion transports the POTUS to insensitive peppers in the compost of his mentis. October 11th. Inadvertently stapled vein decorations. The elf practitioner pricks up his ears. Annual nullifier of death celebrated. The possible capstone of prodigy is connectedness, rhetorical, magnetically attracted to, flourish, shaken, not baked, birded, and bead. October 17th. A good word to start, a flow, initiate, a torrent, riff, a new utterance, awaken from Napster nostalgia bout. Hallows operate in visible machinery, delivering terrestrial improbables and the delusion merchants chalk up a another deal. October 18th, part one. Settlement fatigue. Erase the allegory through personal navigator attentiveness. How increase and decrease implicate creases? Uncertain. One's favorite particle to substitute or another's. Contrariness evades maternity proposition. A guaranteed motility affectation. Beard option raised and exaggerated. Contempt excitation. A political dream of fiend up mission scribblers. October 18th, part two. Welfare brooding collapses, Honolulu atavistic with friendless wallet aghast at talent warmongering. Post snaz fellaheen approaches pardonable waste cerebellum. 
coordinates, integuments, rostrum valence, opportunistic forestry contempt devalues this mostly Arcadian Calibanist trickery. Opine me with a blunt tool or foolish punt. October 18th, part three. Non-alcoholic excuse for incoherence detaches autocracy from syllogy, if syllogy is a word or was before just now. Word birth we marvel at thee as thou takest thy place in the lexicon. We will nurture thee and teach thee thy definitions and declensions parts of speech and connotations. October 19th. Swallowing, apropos meagerness, the eager apprentice mandibles it. Bulldozer consistency in management, soloed maelstrom, continuous meltdown of recipe for domestic estimation before the comestible hurricane. Woe to the office removed when the pissed electorate rises up voting. Cognate astonishment at the ball pit, bully pulpit taken literally, effusive digressions from humanity. October 24th. Tribulation Chronicle appendage stuck up on Baton Rouge e-memoir. X-rate the Creighton barrel. Abrogate Godwin's law for the duration. Fake appetite correction bottles superior Rust Belt montage. A parade of wasted manipulates prowls the edge of pandemic. October 25th. Generate pentathlon repartee mandalas. Overtly pasteurized molt mottling sweeps through moldering Senate majority. Arrested progress. Dynamic incantatory welcome mat. Gigantic abstention infusions corrected. Misnomer where gnomic contributor insinuates inebriation. Papal conniption uptake renovates an embattled monarchy, serving loaded blessing regrets, apparently peninsula-wide. November 1st. Capacious arrogance of the North opens a grieved partnership with Telstar Satnav to pulp one's only appropriate dervish rotator volleys. Jim Rat corpuscle awaiting Senate palpitation entente. Pardon my Mesopotamia, but probability lengthening is procedural grazie, is it not? November 7th. Organ postulate serializes kinetic dowry levitation, opening a myriad wattle to varicose vantage points. November 8th, a break in the reaction, democracy's problematic loopholes weaponized from the divine right of kings to the religious right of bigotries, opening fold, karaoke continuum, taser fest shrift. November 11th, part one. Trellis Tribunal condemns cauliflower. Pockmarked apocalypse renders a funny coherence, a licentious border into mortuary melt. When title suffices, rope chamomile moonlight, integument propaganda to a four-lined mantra. November 11th, part two. Rain transcription. Crate paper savagery tunic, wanting to be, 
who you know probable mantra and you don't know how to feel neutered up I've wanted to know could be so difficult I wanted it heartbreaking much better than the crowd in Virginia so uh, we have uh, we have a see-through uh, corrugated root plastic roof uh, outside our bedroom window um, on a it's a, uh, over a screen porch and so when it rains uh, water drips off of a higher the second story roof onto that little roof <clears throat> and so the rain transcript transcriptions were an attempt to um, sort of project what the sound of the raindrops hitting the corrugated roof would sound like uh, translated into English words so it's sort of a an apophenic projection of human words onto uh, you know word patterns sound patterns onto something that of course doesn't speak in English words um, but so that was an interesting little experiment that I did one morning <clears throat> So that's where that came from. November 13th. The fad participant operates madly. Meltdown into hilarity erases election outcome. A palaver of televangelists. Quorum of looped doozies. The dirty dozen of dumbasses. Reflection nationally not good, frankly. Coronavirus having at us, at all, still, as the tantrum turns. November 14th. Backache origami restitution follows melancholy forage mandible. Arrested president allows for democracy fumble. Interception psychosis mirrors apoplexy continuum over billable morose window stacked fragrances. Cultish probability spikes account for open tornado pillocks. The moment operative thunder deals appropriately with forced shore leave fur gamblers. Rogered attire proves ghoulish in international underwear placement. Sweeping majority bosom catapulted buddies into the Potomac, then feline nausea. November 15th. Creative abandonment forces Upanishad reckoned blouse correction. Baster obelisk opines fortress mobster up a glib retraction tree hugger culprit. Ovarian warlord services astonishment rotogravure sensorium to nail zealot particulated followers. Reopen valedictory permanence a common sense flowering of available barometric sensation. November 21st. Undergird the fruitful mention of calcium. Wonder filled mortuary retellings, brand loyalism and portability requirements. Open toed economies profit most in summer when systemic oppressor, you know who, takes them up. November 22nd. Toast up, pre-faced forward, eyes all glowy. Courage aperitif nodule control, efficacy wager, nation balancing. Rasta welcome fellow bell ringer. Premium integer wagering committee. Elf information shards. Crescent. Rectangular poppy installation kit. Wedding omission. Restless leg relief sex. Aperture overture. Keep me app rised. 
praiseworthy appraisal phrasing. November 28th. French cuisine apartment trundles aboriginal garrot upon slow mendacity content, honking arboreal process continuum, Falstaff reckoning or record ceiling meltdown, temperate zoning law belies asymptotic thriller bastion, representative toast prelate, inconsistent gratitude, Stepwise nostalgia for gross occasions of foul out capture. Next nest relative stomp box effects, stealthy withdrawal from basal relegated mnemonic diaper capstone. Never mind those atrocities. They're blanking on the names of injurious appellations. Systemically floating rhododendron blag out or jag off litigation supervisor. <clears throat> November 29th. Legume resuscitation squadron reporting for hypotenuse removal under theory of gravy benediction. Rutherford B. Hayes contagion. Bonnie Dance. Severe model, moderate blood staunch. A suffered melanin commodity toning. How are you? Break it down. Secure the charity. Tick tock. Something in the closet halfway popped another wannabe sentence sometimes instead of gone. Well catered Armageddon follows. Pan flute Genesis. Woke up in Stalingrad split level, that bastion of futility. Fly wheel well to fuselage. The organism's pretense, a dental fixture upper, scuppered in turn. December 5th. The apparent festivities camouflaged a viral exchange. What is autoentelechy again? Favorable traffic patterns house emotional disturbances in the real estate market. Mark my words. At least note the musical ones. Barely estimating the hoped for range, we plummeted into the spreadsheet. Cooperative monoliths everywhere choose GIF. Grifting by robocall, it's just so impersonal. Take me, shake me but do it to my face. Put some effort into it, man. December 6th. A marginal epithet skewers alterity. The vacillator's tontine encourages modular compliance until one's left with one left. Rejection particles infect appraisal. Ruinous fortitude acceptable. The maudlin power play vacates the premise. Courage transmission insists on relative optimization. Prose deceptively while the uncanny makeshift oozes its sinewy insinuation. December 12th. Curlew in the precarium a fatalistic attack on the Potemkin fluctuations of the modus James Randi. He's a smooth operetta, but too bad he's just a hoax, spelled H-O-X and sometimes pronounced hox, just the way we do around here. December 20th. Delicate negotiator, you talk us into a shared space of encouragement with folksy opportunity wisdom, whisking away antenna pleats. Favorable conscience apologizes readily over fortified drama mechanism when eruption promises alternate the pink slips.
December 26th. Baked boredom modifies the elementary nonsense of pantomime. Featureless navy bean, have you come with guns ablazing? Tell me true, did the runaround sue you? The velour presidential era has ended in a draw. Not. <clears throat> December 31st. Out with the fold, in with the clue. And that was it. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't see any questions in the comments, but um, I thank you all for watching and listening. Um, uh, so yeah, so I was saying at the beginning that I was hoping when I started this series to give people a way to you know pass the time and hopefully entertain them, and I was very gratified that there were a number of people that. Um, consistently tuned in and watched and um, so there were more people that watched afterwards um, but I uh, it's hard for me to tell who they are unless they leave a you know a, a like or a, a comment so um, please if you want me to be gra grateful to you um, directly leave me a comment or uh, um, a, a like or you know one of the other emojis that Facebook gives you um, uh, so you can find the rest of these readings uh, if you go to my Facebook profile and click on videos. They're all there. Um, they're not labeled very well there, so you're kind of, you know, if you're looking for a particular one, it's difficult to, you know, find in Facebook, but you can, you know, use the luck of the draw and just click on them and see what you get. Um, I also post them on my YouTube channel, so if you go to YouTube and do a search for Steve Carl Poetry Readings, that should bring up a playlist that will have all of them on there. So um, if you uh, would prefer, you can go over there and use that. Um, and uh, I thank you very much for tuning in, and I got have more material that I'm working on all the time, so um, hopefully relatively soon there are, I will be able to have another one of these so um, thank you and everybody enjoy the rest of your day Woo. bye bye <laughs>